name is uh original stutter box big stutter box that is ex ex gangster for five who's pablo bishop bloods out of south central los angeles on the east side of l.a when i came into the pablos i was already active uh, as far as with the blood thing I became active back in 76 on the east side of Compton, Lewis Park Fire Rose. Moved uh, Pablo to 78. I had uh, met with uh, some dudes over there by the name of uh, Dr. Dirk, Shawkey, AKA G Man, Poochie, Baby B, Sir Nose. Mr. Magic and uh, a few other brothers. We got together and uh, during that time, the brothers just wanted to uh, be a part of an a acronym, a three-letter acronym. You know, most dudes was claiming sets with the three-letter words, so we wanted to, to introduce something uh, to, so we could stand out and be representative. But most of the brothers didn't really feel that it was in our interest to be associated with a gang, such as, you know, the Bloods or the Crips. And uh, I was very active. So I kind of pushed the issue. So uh, at the end of the day, after our negotiating our, our agreements, we uh, came to a conclusion that we was gonna be Bloods. Pablo Bishop Bloods. 52nd Street, because everybody revolved around 52nd. This was in 78. I was, uh, so I could say about 12 or 13. I was in seventh grade, 12 or 13. Can we rewind a little bit and, and take us back to Compton and tell me what you remember was going on over there on the east side? I guess primarily it was Looters Park and East Side Pie at the time. Well, well it, was, it was nothing but Looters Park and the Compton Bishops. Uh, when I moved over there, you know, to take it back, I went to 11 different foster homes as a youth, as a kid. I originally was born on, on 92nd in Bell Haven. I moved to the Jordan Downs at the age of two from 92nd in Bell Haven. I stayed over there to the age of eight and a half. So I, I was familiar at a young age with the dynamics that was transpiring in the early 70s. I went to 92nd Elementary School for a couple of years and then to the second grade. So I used to go through the alleys and I and I seen with my own eyes through the alleys off of 97, 96, 95th Street, going to 92nd Elementary School, Alley Bishop, Block Bishop, Warrior Bishops. And uh, back then, I seen the blood on the wall. This is in 1971, 72. So for those who say, oh, we wasn't associated, I seen that. I remember when I was like eight years old, uh, a guy named Big Bubba. He was uh, he was the leader of the Jordan Down Crips back then. I didn't know you know the difference. You know what what he was. You know I heard he was he was an OG Crip, but he had uh, he loved him low quash and he said, "Hey, uh, young 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 blood, I'm gonna put you on my shoulder and grab them low quash." They were so high up in the tree, so. You know, for those who say, well, you know, blood was separated, but everybody was saying blood, but the bishops, for some reason, start utilizing that blood when they used to hit up on the walls back in 71 and 72. And, you know, real quick, I just want to say, they hood started off of 97th Street, north of 97, all the way to Nadu from Alameda, and you could say Laurel was kind of like a borderline, all the way to uh, Graham. We wind up, uh, wind up moving on Pearl, 908 North Pearl Street, between Am and Rose Grand. And uh, that's where I got getting my influence as far as being a part of the Lewis Park Fire Rose at a very young age, you know. I used to, uh, Hang out there with uh, Herman Jr., Willie T. You know, they used to be down there. You know, I used to go down there a little bit, hang with his little brother Bernie. 
So a lot was going on. I used to go to the park, you know, my brother, big little Stutterbox, he's he's little Stutterbox from Lewis Park. I got an older brother named Big Stutterbox. He from Compton Bishop. My brother, Lil Stutterbox, which is Big Stutterbox from Lewis Park now, that's when he, he got his influence through the Lewis Parks. He got to represent that, and I got to represent up under him as Baby Stutterbox. But when I moved from Compton to the Pueblos, I took the name Stutterbox and, and incorporated because by me being over there, I could no longer be considered a baby stutter box. I was big stutter box. So I got four dudes up under me that stutter box. You got little stutter box. You got baby stutter box, rest in peace. You got killed by the villains in Compton. You got tiny stutter box. And then you got infant stutter box. Okay, so when you get to the, to the Peblos, when, when you first get there, is this still Peblo players? What stage is it because before you guys put the B on it? When we got there, when I moved up there, there wasn't wasn't no gang activity going down. You know, now from what I was told, because you know, that's my neighborhood, I need to know the historical perspective. And what I was told, talking to some older homies, most of them, players and hustlers, that it was a gang that was Pablo Bishops in 72. 73, 74. It was a game that, that 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 was started. And what I was told, it was low rider from, from Bishops and Watts, Space Ghost, Bobby Lavender, and others, because there was some issues going on in Edison with the Crips. And the and the brothers from the Pablos was was getting harassed by the Crips. And they clicked up with the brothers from the Pablos. And when they clicked up at Edison with the brothers from the Peblos, the brothers from the Peblos incorporated the bishops. So it was some individuals from the Peblos back then that was pushing bishop, Pablo bishop. And they was allied with the bishops in Watts. When I came in the Peblos, like I reiterated earlier, there was no activity, no blood activity, no game banging activity. It was like one of the older homies stated in a previous interview, they, they was cool. If nigga was cool with them, you know, they was cool. They didn't have no issues. Long, you know, it was about their money. I respect that. But what we did, we didn't give a damn who you was, where you came from, who you was related to in the Peblos. If you was a crip, you get an extra part of that. So we started eradicating the Peblos, the bloods. We started eradicating. We we went to the back street, and we, we went back there because we heard some Christmas back there. We got into with them brothers. There was some classes, and the brothers, you know, incorporated our, met, our, our, our methodology as far as being a part of this Bishop Blood thing. We went to uh, the Albert Center. You had Coco from Fire Deuce Hoover, rest in peace, over there because he's kin to the Moore family. He thought that he had a pass. He had the blue rag in his pocket, khaki suit on, Blue shoe strings and all stars, blue all stars. And we went back there and we whipped his ass, excuse my French, and ran him up in the Albert Center office and they locked the doors on us, on him. And he had he was escorted out of there by the police. You know what I'm saying? And uh we uh heard some dudes trying to claim Albert Center block crib. We went back there and we smashed on him. Picked up trash cans, bust them side there, he threw trash cans top side of them. It was a handful of them. You know, they was running, so we ain't none of this happening. You know, we went across the tracks. We got at the uh, Mark and Mafia boys. You know, we had drew down on each other, the few of them, but we drew down and they drew down and, you know, we said, fuck that man, you know, we gonna, we gonna go on and they accepted what we was pushing because it, it wasn't no issue. You know, there wasn't no Crips, you know, so we said, fuck it, man, they gonna incorporate up under the Pablo Bishop blood flag. Now, when you got to the Peblos, were different neighborhoods like uh, Castle Crib, Shack Boys, what, what were some of the neighborhoods that were active when you got there in the uh, late 70s? Well, you had, you had some, some Hoovers that had family members over there, you know, and uh, we smashed on them. We, you had some 
they had just started the East Coast. So you had a few trying to slide up in there, but we ran them out quick. They 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 got eradicated. They they knew that you was out of bounds in the first place. And uh you had uh one dude, his name was Lyle McDuffie. That's my nigga, rest in peace. He was <laughs> we seen him, man, he had the blue khaki suit with the blue rag hanging out of his pocket all the way down. He 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 his name was Tippy and he used to tip. You know, you walk with a tip. And uh with the long air rain in his ear, you know what I'm saying? And so we bounced up on him. And we said, oh, what's happening, blood? What you doing? Nigga, this blood's over here. What you doing, homie? He said, man, I've been over all my life, man. You know, the East Coast. I said, nah, ain't no coasters over here. So we got to hollering at him. And he was like, man, look, homie, y'all didn't rush me, man. I appreciate that, man. But he said, man, you know, you know what's going on? I said, man, it's a new change, homie. This, this, this ain't, this ain't what it is no more, nigga. You know we ain't, ain't none of that happening over here. So he said, man, we asked, man, why, why did you, why are you claiming this shit anyway? He said, I was at Edison, and the Crips chased us down Compton. I tripped and fell, and they beat the shit out of me and them dudes left me. And I felt that if they gonna leave me, I might as well roll with these coaches. He said, that's why he did it. I said, well, man, we'd never do that. We with you, homie. You gotta, you gotta come back home. So he came on back home. He put, the, he put the MCG on his arm. He crossed out the East Coast, put the Peblos, East Coast Killer, put the Peblos, Bishop, and uh, he was with it, 100%, you know what I'm saying? Because he he understood that it was a different culture over there, and we was inclusive, and we didn't we we wasn't gonna use that against him for coming on back home. But we understand why he did what he did, and uh, we accepted that. So we took the blue rag and all that old shit and burnt it up, and all that old bullshit, and uh, you know he dresses changed the dress code. But I was incarcerated in '82, and uh, I got word to one of my homegirls through a letter that Tippy got killed in San Bernardino, and uh, I was hot. I was hot. It says some, some San Bernardino essays killed him. I was super hot. So I was in SRCC in September 82. I think he got killed September, October 82. And uh, one of the Crip dudes that was my partner, we was cool, because you know, you know, we had an understanding. We used to live waste together and shit. And uh, he said, uh, hey, what's up, Box? You straight? I said, yeah, I'm good, homie. He said, man, you something, something on your mind? What's happening? I said, I'm good. He said, man, something on your mind, Box. He said, the, he said, the Hoover's tripping? I said, hell no. Nah. Because, you know, they, they didn't get along with the Hoover's. I said, come on, come on, please. So he said, uh, I told him what happened. He said, well, nigga, let's tear this motherfucker up. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, wait a I said, man, he said, box, I'm rolling, man. He said, man, there's three dudes from San Bernardino, stress says, a couple of them from Redlands. When, when, we, when we break for breakfast in the morning in the day room line up, we getting down. And uh, we didn't tell nobody else. There was some other bloods in there. You know, we didn't tell other, other Crips in there. We didn't tell nobody. So that morning we get up, get in line, and everybody lining up in the day room to go to child. Take off. Socked out the essay from uh, Redlands. Put him to sleep. Connected. He went out. Weezer over there working on another essay. I get another essay. I'm working him. He knocked him down. You know what I'm saying? He running this shit. So they police run up in there. They mace us up. Put us in a hole. We in a hole. We banging. We howling out his hood. I'm out of my hood and all that old shit. You know. But uh, we were saying, you know, fuck the essay hoods and all that old shit. But we stayed in the hole like about ten days and uh. They sent me back to Matola and uh, sent him to, uh, to Drake and uh, SRCC. So uh, after that, we had, uh, uh, I haven't heard from Weasel in like 35 years and I just got in contact with him, me and the pen and land. I don't know which pen, but we made contact after 35 years, man. He, he said he thought I was dead, man. He heard that I died. 
And I said, bullshit. He said, man, he said, man, you don't know box tears coming down my eyes, man. You, he said, it was only two blood niggas I fuck with. He was my friends. And he said, you and Lizard from Villain. Man, y'all was my niggas, man. He said, but man, you was my number one blood nigga, man. He said, man, I thought you was gone, man. He said, man, it's a dream come true, man. And uh, so we chopped it up for a while, man. You know, I was excited hearing from him. He doing good, and we locked down on a murder, but, you know, it was good hearing from that dude after 30, 35, 36 years, man. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.